Welcome to Arrival Coaching's Thrive Movement 2018 interview series. I'm Beth Myers, your host and the owner of Arrival Coaching. I'm a certified Law of Attraction Empowerment Coach, Mentor, and Speaker. And this year's Thrive Movement focuses on mothers and daughters and highlighting thriving in real relationships, which I term as real empowerment allows love. Thank you for watching as I introduce you to women who are daughters, some are mothers, and some are not. Each are welcomed to share and reflect on their roles as a mother, as a daughter, and how that has influenced them on their journey to thrive and not just survive. We also explore how they embrace relationships to deal with their emotions and empower their connections with others, especially other women. Today I'm honored and would like to introduce you to my mentor, teacher, colleague, and friend, Christy Whitman. Christy Whitman is a transformational leader, celebrity coach, and the New York Times bestselling author of The Art of Having It All, A Woman's Guide to Unlimited Abundance. The Today Show, The Morning Show, and her work has been featured in People Magazine, Seventeen, Women's Day, Hollywood Life, Teen Vogue, among others. As the CEO and founder of the Quantum Success Learning Academy and the Quantum Success Coaching Academy, a 12-month Law of Attraction coaching certification program, Christy has helped thousands of people worldwide to achieve their goals through her empowerment seminars, speeches, coaching sessions, and products. Christy's life-changing messages reach over 200,000 people each month, and her work has been promoted by and featured alongside esteemed authors and luminaries such as Dr. Wayne Dyer, Louise Hay, Marianne Williamson, Marcy Shymoff, Brian Tw Tracy, Neil Donald Walsh, and Abraham Hicks. She currently lives in Arizona with her charming husband, Frederick, and their two amazing boys, Alexander and Maxim. So Christy, welcome. Thank you so much, Beth. I'm so proud, so proud of you, and I'm so proud and honored to be here, so thank you. Oh, thank you so much. And I am one of those certified QSCA coaches, and I have you to thank for um, creating such a wonderful program. So thank you, Christy. Thank you. I'm honored. <laughs> Alrighty, well, we're going to get into um, how to um, thrive in relationships with that mother-daughter um, relationship. And I have a question for you about how you would describe um, yourself or how others describe you. Describe you. Um, can you give me 10 words that best describe you? Um, I would say generous, loving, um, caring. Um, my son would say beautiful. He always tells me every day I'm beautiful. Um, how would I, pa uh, not patient. <laughs> <laughs> that would not be a word someone would describe me as. <laughs> um, dedicated, committed, loyal, uh, trustworthy, fun. It depends if I'm at a, at a rock concert with you, then, then definitely fun. <laughs> <laughs> I can just envision you at a rock concert, Christy, because I know that's a passion of going to listen to that music and enjoy it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. There's no holding back. My husband sometimes looks at me and like, who is this person? So <laughs> I just, I let it go and I'm just, so I have a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, and you know, a lot of times those are labels that other people will give us. They'll describe us. Like you said, your son describes you. And um, then, you know, it's really important that I am part, right? Um, um, us acknowledging what it is that we bring forth in the world, whether it's being <clears throat> trustworthy or dedicated, like you were saying. And you know, a word I would use to describe you, Christy, is real. Oh. And that's my very first impression of you from the very first time that I met you in person. 
and I'll never forget it being in the swimming pool <laughs> and you were looking for directions to the spa. <laughs> I know, you were going to the spa and there's a big shocker. <laughs> <laughs> Self-care is so important, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, yes. you were just, it was like I had known you forever. Um, you were so kind. Um, it was at your mm -hmm. quantum success in business mm -hmm. the first time meeting you. And I met you when I was in the pool and you were on the way to the spa. So, um, you know, I, I feel like it is just, I'm just so honored that you are here um, as we're talking about thriving in real relationships. Um, oh. You are, to me, a, a, a great model of that in um, your uh, business, in your family life that you share with us very publicly. Yes. And, uh, I just uh, appreciate that. And I think good nuggets to share with our audience today. I'm, 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 thank you. I'm very touched. <laughs> thank you. So, um, and one of the things that um, I wanted to ask you is how would your mom describe you? Um, what would be some words that she would use? Would they be some of the same or would they be different? Well, it, de <laughs> it depends. <laughs> our relationship is so different now than it was years ago. So how would she describe it now? Or how does she describe me now or Ben? How about both? <laughs> Can you do both? <laughs> um, yeah, I think, okay. So now she would describe me as um, brave, as courageous, um, as determined, um, someone that has perseverance, uh, generous, um, loving, kind, um, understanding so i think those are some of the ways my mom would describe me now <laughs> back then um bitchy if i can even say that word um <laughs> rebel uh wouldn't listen did what she want you know did whatever she wanted to do um i don't um, Difficult, I think she would say. Yeah. yeah. In interesting because very polar opposites, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I, I think that that is um, so true for many of us on our journey as daughters. And uh, at your goddess event, we talked about being daughters of the universe. And I just love that because we all are daughters. And that's one of the roles that we're in, uh, that we step into in our lives. And that's something that never goes away, whether your mother has passed on or transitioned like my mom has, or whether your mother's very present in your life or is not present at all, um, e even here on this physical plane. So tell us a little bit about your mom's and your relationship. Um, I know it's very different from how it used to be. So what are some things that you did to shift that and assist that? Or was it your mom that did that? Or was it a combination? Tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> Let me tell you. No, honestly, my, my break, breaking point with my mom, because it was not good. It, we, we, it, when I felt um, it was safe with her to trust her, she would break my trust. Um, you know, I couldn't tell her anything. And even if I did tell her something, she would tell everybody else. So there wasn't a lot of trust there. And, and yet, um, she was, she's very, um, well, my uncle describes her as caustic. So when she asks for something, she doesn't ask for something, she demands something. Get that, do that, do the, you know. And that's how she communicates. Um, that's just how she is, right? And, and, it doesn't feel good, right? So that part of me would rebel. And there were so many things that I didn't either like about her or that parts of me would rebel. Mm -hmm. But I remember the day um, Alex, my son, who's now nine, um, he was just a baby. I think he was five months old or something like that. And I was playing with him on the ground and he used to giggle when I would put my hair over him. And my mom made a comment. She came and sat down, she, you know, he was giggling and stuff. And she made a comment about, would you move out of the way? No one wants to see you. We want to see the baby. And I just got like, ow. But I didn't have that language at that time. I went, I pushed my mother mm. and I grabbed my baby. And I was like, 
this is undone. Like, you know, it, it just, I was tired of being treated the way I was treated. And there were moments of that where I've had to just say no. I mean, there was a time when um, we were in living in Montreal and in, in our house and um, my mother was, I don't remember exactly what happened, what was said, I could probably think about it, but, but she was saying something like um, kind of behind my back to my husband. And I just went, not in my house, because it was, it was so disrespectful. It was, it was something she said that was so about me, but behind my back, and I could hear it. So I'm like, that's not love. That's not loving the person. That's not being committed and loyal to the person that, you know, is supposed to love you. And so I, I remember just putting up my, I kicked my parents, or not my, mom, my dad could have stayed, but I kicked my mom out of my house. Because I was just so tired of it. It's like I'd had enough of it. And those moments of saying no to that type of behavior, not that either one of those behaviors was maybe appropriate, what I did, but it was me standing my ground and saying enough. And so that was one thing is that, you know, there are just certain times where I'm like, that hurt that, you know, so it was me learning my own boundaries and being able to say that didn't feel good to me. You know, that I don't like when, I tell you, it was, it was weird how the relationship changed because instead of blaming her or wanting her to change, which is always what I wanted, I would come from the I and I would say to her, I can't trust you. Like, I can't feel trust inside. Like, I want to share things with you because you tell everybody. So I can't tell you these things. And she, she started to get what I needed in this relationship with her. You know, it's like I had to retrain her in how to relate with me. And I did a lot of healings on, you know, many times in therapy and, and you know, working with my mentors to be able to release the energy of all these different times. You know, there, there were, every, I've been doing this work on myself for 20 years now. And there was something last week that came up and I had to just stop and feel the energy of it and let it go and change my perspective about it because I know I want to continue to create a loving relationship with my mom. And so it's, you know, it was a lot of those moments where it was like enough. I'm not, I'm not taking this anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm not going to be treated like that. I'm not going to be talked to like that, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm, I, I, I had a moment like that with my father too. I know this is about fathers. It's the same thing. I had a moment of like, the way you two speak to each other, it's like, that's not love. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it's not okay to talk to my mom that way in front of me. Mm -hmm. Like, these are my boundaries. And it's like, and if you must, and if you do, then I, I'm not going to be able to spend time with you. Because I want to be able to, to be in a space where people actually love and care about each other and speak to each other in a nice way. You know, I'm doing that with, with Alex, my son, he's nine. And you know, sometimes he thinks he's a commander of a ship. He's like, you do that, and you do that. And I'm like, I'm sorry. What you <laughs> I don't have a boss the last I checked. My dad and I, you know, dad hasn't given me orders for years since I was, you know, a, an adult. My husband certainly doesn't order me around. My nine-year-old is not going to either. So, you know, it's putting up those, uh-uh, you know. I learned from Karen Wilson, who was one of my mentors. Um, she said there's the, you know, rules of relationship. And the first rule is that if it's true for you, it's true for them. And the second rule is, um, <laughs> is that, is that um, exactly what we're just talking about. It's like we teach other people how to treat us. Yeah. Yeah. So true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it, it's, it's being able to put that stake in the ground and create that boundary or putting that little fence around for us that just is like, you know, you, it's, it's not okay to cross that um, because I'm a valuable person, you're a valuable person, and for us to have this relationship, it has to be different than yes. how it is right now. So absolutely. thank you for sharing that because I think that um, is something that um, – most human beings struggle with, um, particularly in that mother-daughter relationship, because there is that um, relationship that, um, you know, even if it's a, an adoption, 
or foster care or um, such, it, it, there's still that bond that can be there with that mother, that daughter. Um, and the, what you see, what, I, what as a school counselor, what I would see is the issues that the girls were having with their friends were issues that their moms were mm -hmm. experiencing or had experienced and there was still pain and still energy around those kinds of relationships that were needing to be healed um, and um, didn't have the, the necessary tools at that time to know how to help shift out of that. And that's one of the things that I think is really important to remember that it starts with ourselves. Um, Absolutely. It does. And, and if I could just share like a quick story that it was, it was amazing for me. Um, cause you know, a lot of times we are moms or our daughters push our buttons. Right. And, um, I would always say that my mom could push my buttons. Like nobody else could find my buttons except for my mom. You know, it was one of those things, but that relationship, because she could push so many buttons, those were opportunities for me to heal. Yes. And, um, there was, there was a story, um, I think it was about a year and a half, maybe two years ago. And, um, my cousin, maybe not, it was about four years ago because he just graduated high school. Oh my God, how time flies. <laughs> he was going to this school called Brophy in Scottsdale and it was an all boys school. And there was an all girls school that was Xavier. And my mom, because all of her friends, their daughters went to Xavier. She wanted me to go. I didn't want to go like to high school there. I wanted to go to high school with my friends in the area that I went. I didn't want to go to a private school and I certainly didn't want to go to a Catholic school. And there were so many things wrong with it. I couldn't tell you. So she wanted me to go take this test. And I remember as a young girl and I, and I, I told her, I don't want to go to the school and she would try to bribe me and all, you know, all these different things. And finally, um, that she found out the test was a certain weekend that I had already committed to going skiing with my friend and her parents. So my mom made me cancel the ski trip, which I was so devastated about, and go to the school and take this test, right? So I went there and I saw, for whatever reason, these just weren't my girls, right? So I just bubbled in the, no the answers because I knew I wanted to fail because I did not want to get in. <laughs> <laughs> right? I was clear about that. So my mom gets the news and she opens it up and she's so disappointed. And I remember being like, yes, you know, and it was a victory. I could get to go where school I wanted to go to. So my cousin is now going to Brophy and I was telling him this story, the exact same story. And my mom is there listening and she goes, what could you... <laughs> Could you imagine who she would have become had she gone to that school? And the way she said it was like, I'm just nothing. I haven't done anything. I haven't done, you know, I, I just looked at her and I was like, like, it's never, ever going to be enough. Like ever, 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 ever. You know, so I like cry, I went in the bathroom and just silently cried. We were in a big family party. And I just really got, it was like a bell rang on my head. You know, it's never going to be enough. You could become the first woman president of the United States. You know, it's never going to be enough. And when I got that and like, I viscerally shifted that inside of myself. I'm not kidding you. Maybe two years later, the different conversations we're having lunch and all of a sudden she says, how's business? And I said, oh, I just got, you know, booked to speak in Milan. And she's like, Milan? And I go, she's Milan, Italy? The country of Italy? And I'm, I'm like, yes. And she goes, and did they, how did you get this thing? I, they sought me out. They, they, they sought you out? It, it, it's like this Milan, like the, con the, the country of Italy. <laughs> and, then, and then she goes, I mean, she was in shock, right? And then, and then she goes, and are they paying you? And I said, yeah, they're going to fly me first class with Frederick or I'm going to go to Milan. And, and oh, my, I'm so, it was like, who knew Milan, Italy would have been the thing? <laughs> you know, that was, I, I almost went, oh, oh, well, that's what that feels like to get my mom's approval. Wait, okay. And I kind of just let that, oh, that's, that's interesting. It was a different thing to experience. But it was because I let go of having to chase after 
and, and try to prove myself or live my life according to what mom will finally give me the final, you're okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I just let it go. And then all of a sudden it was like, so I stopped chasing it and I just came back to myself and healed myself. And all of a sudden it's like, I'm getting, she's like telling me all the time, you're so brave. You're, you're so, you're so confident. You're so persistent. You're so, the, 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 you know, it, it's, it's amazing because as a kid, she called me a pain in the ass, right? I was constantly asking and, and that was a bad thing. And now her perspective is she goes, well, I know one reason you're successful. You're persistent. <laughs> and I'm like, that's so interesting. Yes, it is, isn't it? It's the same woman. <laughs> well, and it's, it's you know, when we perceive someone as difficult or a pain in the ass, really the polar opposite of that is that you are determined, you are persistent. And helping to flip that perspective when we can flip that ourselves within ourselves and just recognize that, you know, I am persistent and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it may be perceived by others in a certain way, but you know what you want. You're determined, you know, and, and, you know, hey, as you stayed steady and aligned with who you are and what was important to you, your relationship with your mom shifted and changed. Everything. It's, it's what I teach. I mean, it's what you teach. What, you know, it's what we, yeah. it's the inner, it's the inner out, not the outer in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, can you talk a little bit about that, Christy? Um, you know, we we're talking about it with relationships and with uh, mothers and daughters, and you have a new book that's coming out. Yeah. Um, very, very exciting. I love it. I think it's your best work to date. And um, I know you have others that may be popping up too. And um, so your book is called Quantum Success, Seven Essential Laws for a Thriving, Joyful, and Prosperous Relationship, there's that word, right, with work and money. Now, because women and girls all step into that role, you know, we step into roles as students, we step into roles as um, bosses, as colleagues, as coworkers, and especially as women, it's a real pivotal time for women um, in their careers, whether it be for their daughter, maybe as a student, or for themselves. Um, talk a little bit about that, that spiral of, and, and um, what you were just talking a little bit about, that alignment, that momentum, and how that comes forth um, with success in uh, work, as well as in relationships. Absolutely. You know, the, the great thing about working with the universal laws, they're so feminine, so it's so easy for women. <laughs> so that's the good news. Um, I find that it takes a very um, feminine type of man, or at least a very open man, to be able to work and receive the, the concept of energy and, and universal laws. But um, the, it really is that way. It's like you you attract from your state of being and who you are you know, and you, you just understand how it's like a reverse, reverse engineered way of living life. Mm -hmm. Um, because you know why you want to have something instead of having the thing be the thing that you want, you get to experience the essence of it. So if you have a goal or if you have a desire, if you want, you know, want a job promotion or a certain job or a certain income or whatever it is, you understand there's a relationship with that thing that manifests and that most of the time those things don't have any control it's us and when I say most of the time if you think about that the subject of money money doesn't have opinions it doesn't have thoughts it doesn't have baggage it doesn't have imprints it you know it goes where it flows and it goes where the energy flows so we're either attracting a money to us or repelling it from us it's not doing anything so we're the one that determines that relationship that's the good news. Yeah. Same thing with success you know, in, our, in our careers. You know, um, Relationships with, say, a mother and a daughter, or a daughter and a mother, however that, you know, what the roles are, um, you got two people, right. right? But the thing is, my mom, she's still the same way. She still says the same stories about how, you know, how hard it was and they never had enough. And my mom had a very silly perspective from my mom. She had belonged to a tennis club and had very rich friends. My dad took them on her on wonderful vacations and they always had food. 
but it was just never enough because she was always comparing herself to the next person who had more never to be satisfied in the moment. And she's still like that. And you know, the d moment she takes her last breath, she's probably gonna continue to be like that. And that's unfortunate for her. Believe me, I've tried so many times <laughs> to help or rescue or, you know. And, but what's different now is that I can be with her and I am not energetically charged because of her opinion or her perspective. You know, I have more compassion, like, you've had an amazing life. I wish you could have enjoyed it up here a little bit more, mm -hmm. you know? And my dad, you know, my dad too. So there, there's that for me. It's compassion now instead of, you got to know this. You're just, you know, it's like I've pulled my hair out before trying to like, because I love them, right? But it's like the analogy that I say inside the QSCA. It's like when someone doesn't want the information and they're not ready, it's like saying, hey, I've got this great piece of cake take the cake, you know? And they're like, no, thanks. I'm not having, I don't want any cake. And you're like, no, you got to try this cake. It's the most amazing cake ever. And they're like, I'm good. I don't want the cake, you know? And now there's more resistance building up and you're like, but it's the best. It's the best. You will never find, as long as you live in the universe, you will never find a cake that's better than this. Now they're pissed. They're like, get the damn cake out of my face. Right. right? It's like the resistance builds and builds and builds. And so I was finding that with my mom with my dad, with certain family members. And as I let that go and just cared about focusing on my own life and, you know, still having a relationship with them, but not being hooked in to what they say or what they do, putting up a boundary, yes. right? Yes. But not having it hook me. And if it hooks me, taking responsibility where it does hook me so I can unhook it. So I can shrink the buttons. Yes. Oh, such powerful uh, messages um, for mothers and daughters to take away of um, not allowing someone else to hook you um, and being able to just create that space there for yourself to be okay and love. You know, it really all comes down to love, doesn't it? And feeling yeah. that compassion, which is a part of love. Yeah. So. You know, it, it's important the language that we use too. You know, the language that we use when we relate to one another. Um, it, you know, I, I, for example, would get very shoulded on most of my life. You should, and my mom still does this. In a minute conversation, she could should three times or four, sometimes maybe five. Um, but it's, you know, just constant. It's a role, responsibility. Do this. There's only one way to do it. This is the way. And then, you know, I should have done that. I shouldn't have eaten that. I shouldn't. But, you know, it's always this like beating yourself up for something that you've already done that you have no more control over. Yeah. Or it's a, oh, God, what should I do? You know, and then there's such a limitation in that word should because it gives no options. It gives no personality, no you know, life force through it. It's just as a role. As a daughter, I should do that. When I was a daughter, I probably should call my mom. I don't want to call my mom right now. You know, it's like, and now, especially if I'm shooting, I'm like, well, you know, I really should. Then it doesn't feel good. It doesn't, you know, it's like, do I want to call my mom? Yeah. I'd love to tell her about this or this. I want, yeah, I want to call my mom. Now I'm going into it with a very different energy just before even the conversation starts. I'm coming from, I'm excited to call my mom because I want to talk to her versus, oh, should I do that? Yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. And we get to choose those roles that we step into, right? We can choose a very empowered role that we step into, or we can choose a very disempowered role um, with that shoulding or feeling like the victim of, you know, oh, she always does this and I always have to do this or, you know, really, it's really checking in with ourselves and helping um, figure out what it is that we do desire and how we want to feel and how does that relate with the other people, whether it's our mother, whether it's a colleague, um, how all of that is uh, coming forth um, with, the, with the, that energy. And uh, I love the perspective that you take with everything is energy. And if we tap into that and get really aligned with what it is that we want and we desire, we can create whatever type of relationship heal any type of every type of relationship by just some of the things that you shared with us today christy yes it's it's empowering it's really empowering work i mean you can change your relationships with your kids with 
you know, I don't have daughters, I have two sons, but, um, you know, it's like, I, I work with energy all the time. Um, we have my, my 20 year old cousin that, that, you know, helps us with the kids that stayed with us for 10 days. And the energy in the house was different. She's lovely. She's sweet, but it's another person in the house. Right. And so it's like, we had to all be very mindful of our own energy and the emotions that we were feeling and how it was affecting us. And what, you know, what do I need? I need to just go and take a break for five minutes, you know, just take a drive and get a breath, you know, maybe she can take the boys and you and I can go on a date night, you know? So it's like, you're checking in with, in the moment, what are my needs? What are my wants? You know, because you're paying attention to yourself. You're paying attention to your own energetic field and the connection that you have energetically to, you know, people, places, things, ideas, you know, everything. Right, right. And you talk about that in your book. You talk about that self-regulation um, and how important it is to take care of ourselves. Do you want to expand on that a little bit more too? Absolutely. Um, so self-regulating, it really kind of came to me when I was with uh, some wolves, you know, um, last year. And it was interesting because this wolf, she was very friendly and she was on a leash and she was with the trainer. And all of a sudden she just um, went behind the trainer and just kind of hid for a second. And then all of a sudden she came back out and we we're all like, well, what did she, why'd she just do that? And the trainer says, she's just self-regulating something. Either she picked up an energy or she, something spooked her or there's a smell that she smelled. She didn't like something. It made her just take care of herself for a minute. And I was like, oh my God, that's what we have to do as like, like a wolf, you know, it's like in the moment, someone says something, it hurts you. You're about to cry. Like I did with my mom in that story. I excused myself and went to the bathroom, silently went to the bathroom, cried as many tears as I needed to cry. I released all of that in that moment. That was a birthing for me. That was a releasing for me in that moment. And I cleaned myself up and, you know, went back to the, to the day. Mm -hmm. And it's like when we can self-regulate in that way, when we feel tired, sleep more, mm -hmm. you know, take a nap, right? do whatever you need to do to take care of yourself. Oh, I, no, no, Christy, I'm too busy. I have to just keep drinking coffee because I have to keep going and, you know, keep my, myself adrenalized because I've got so much to do. I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. That's, that's one perspective. Or you can not drink the extra coffee, not do the extra vices, the sugar, the whatever, to kind of keep yourself going and allow yourself to have a moment to meditate or allow yourself to have a moment to rest or just a moment. It doesn't have to be an hour. It could be two minutes just to check in with yourself and fill yourself up with light and love and, you know, connect with the essence of what you want to experience in your life. It's essential. Yeah, it yeah. really, really is. And uh, that was a great example of um, how you did that in your household with everybody in your household while your cousin was there, um, you know, and we can do that at any moment, at any time in our own lives um, in different situations that we happen to be in, whether it's, you know, at home with our family, whether it's in our workplace um, to be able to do that, whether it's driving in the car <laughs> and there's the traffic, uh, crazy, craziness that seems to be going on with the driving going on. So, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it always amazes me uh, when I, when I would go on a trip anywhere, really, I would make sure that I had things to entertain me in the car. Mm -hmm. Um, I would hope for open roads, but it's like, you know, if there was traffic, cause sometimes life there's traffic yeah. contrast, right? But it's, it's those people that get so upset about the traffic, right? And, and it's like, put some CDs in your car that is your time to listen to these CDs. Listen to your music on your iPad, on your iPhone or, or on your phone or, you know, download an, uh, uh, a podcast that you like. You know, do something that in those moments, the moments you can't control, control what you have control over. And that is what you listen to, what you, where you put your perspective and, you know, before you go to bed at night, don't watch the news, you know, read it, read a book, even just like four sentences of an uplifting book, like quantum success, you know, just reading just a sentence or two, just to digest it before you go to bed is going to soothe your energy. It's going to soothe the, the amount of stress that we have on our bodies. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I love that in your book that you just give very practical 
very, um, sometimes for some people, it may be something very new to them, learning about energy and the essential laws that can actually assist you instead of wor you working against um, where it's a struggle and it's so yeah. hard, you know, and yeah. um, it's just you, you do, you give the information in such a digestible way. And like you were saying, even taking like four sentences or a page and really taking that and digesting, it's, it, it is a way to help start to shift um, what you would like to create more joy and to thrive more in your relationships with work, with money, with your yeah. mother, with your daughter, <laughs> fill in the blank, right? <laughs> They're universal. Yeah. So they work for every situation, whatever, wherever, someplace you're having some contrast or dissonance or, you know, something that you just don't like or enjoy and you'd like it to be better. It doesn't have to be horrible. Maybe you just want it better, you know? <laughs> Um, it, it works for all those situations. And, you know, this book, obviously, like all my books downloaded through me, um, this time it was three o'clock in the morning on a cruise ship. And I went into the middle of the bathroom and crouched down on the floor because everybody was sleeping. And it was just a complete download of, you know, the 20 years that I've been in, not I've been in my career, I've had a career longer than 20 years, but for 20 years, I've been applying this information in my career. And I had a career prior to that. And, you know, it was just really my own journey and tips and what I learned and what I learned not to do and, you know, all the things that um, brought me to the type of career success that I have today. And, you know, the joy that I get to experience about it with it. And, um, you know, the fact that I feel like I'm so on purpose and it just thriving in all aspects of it, um, that just it just feeds my soul, you know? And so for more people to understand that their career is really their creative expression in the world and the way that, you know, we're all creators mm -hmm. where we can create, it's one Avenue. Mm -hmm. And, um, for me, it was always just a fun Avenue to apply the universal laws and, and see different results. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Like the laboratory of life. <laughs> yes. And yeah. your, your path in that laboratory and what you've um, brought forth and how to help other people be able to do that. And I just love it, Christy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm so excited to, uh, you have a free gift that you are going to share with the audience. So you want to tell them a little bit about that? I do. I have a free book for you. So it's a um, $24 book. It's actually a hardback book. We're going to send to your house once the book comes out in September. And all I ask is that you pay for the shipping. So you just go to quantumsuccessbook.com and you'll see on there that um, you just put in the shipping. Uh, we're going to send it to you when it comes out. And there's like a fast start guide on there. There's a video of me and a worksheet to help you get going right now. So you don't have to wait so long before the book comes out because the earlier you get started, the better, right? Yeah. So um, whatever you're wanting to do in your career, um, that is going to help you because you're going to learn tried and true principles that when you apply them, um, the results that you have are just more elegant and more fun and more ease and more flow. And do you still have to work? Yes. Do you still have to take action? Yes. You have to get up and do something. Yes. So it's always about alignment and momentum and the book is going to teach you how to do that. Excellent. Thank you so much for your generosity. Um, mm -hmm. I know that was one of the words you used to describe yourself. And I personally know how generous you are and so appreciate um, all that you share with the world and your service in the world. And um, I appreciate your time um, that you've taken today. If people want to learn more about you, Christy, where else can they um, find the best information um, to yeah. learn about you or your programs? Sure. Perfect. So you can go to ChristyWhitman.com or like I said, QuantumSuccessBook.com. Perfect, perfect. And what I will do is I'll put that at the end of the video for people to be able to uh, see um, and access. And uh, I just greatly appreciate your time. Do you have any other parting words for us today, Christy, um, to keep in mind in our mother-daughter relationships or being a daughter of the universe? Yes, uh, we are. Each one of us are daughters of the universe. It's just, you know, when you think about what you would do if you're the mother, you know, if you're a mother, what you would do for your daughter. And, um, just, you know, it, it, there's nothing that the universe, God, God, us, all that is wouldn't want to bestow upon us. And so, um, we have our own free will and we have to direct that energy that's always available to us in the direction and with the focus that we want. 
So if you want to change any aspect of your life or any part of your relationships in your life, um, it all starts with you and learning how to direct that energy. So it's a clear flow and it's not, you're not relating from a pain body, but from a joy body. Mm. Oh, I love that joy body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to go on that joy ride. And <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I want a joy ride. Yeah, great, great. Well, Christy, thank you so much. And to our listeners that are watching, please feel free to share and um, help others know that they can thrive in relationships, which I term as real um, empowerment allows love. And um, keep in mind to be true, be you. And until next time, next month, we'll have another guest on uh, for our monthly focus. And again, Christy, thank you so much for being here with uh, us today. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Beth. Bye, everybody. Take good care.